Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to go over how to linearize nonlinear differential equations. But to get started, we have to remember or review a few key things. So let me just write down a typical second order differential equation. point out a few things. Okay, so we'd call x a dependent variable and t, this is a u by the way, and t is an independent variable. And then we have I'm going to redo that U because it's looking pretty shoddy. And then we have inputs like the U function. So U could be just some strange function of time. So for instance, U of T could be cosine of T. I guess that's not so strange, but um, you get the idea. Okay, so now in this differential equation, I've written it rather verbosely. That is, I've indicated that the dependent variable x is a function of the independent variable t. I usually won't do that. Um, now let's go forward and classify differential equations in a rather uh, simplistic way. So if we think of these terms, or these constants, I shouldn't say constants, the values that multiply the dependent variables and their time derivatives as coefficients, then what we could say is, if those coefficients are constants, then we have time invariant, time invariant differential equations. And so certainly this is a time invariant differential equation. It's actually a linear differential equation, but we'll get to that in just a moment. If some of those coefficients are functions of time, so for instance, if we had this example, x triple dot plus sine of t times x of t equals u of t, so now one of our coefficients is a function of time. We would call that a time varying differential equation. Now, finally, if the equation's dependent variables present themselves as nonlinear functions, then what we end up with is a nonlinear differential equation. So for instance, if we had x triple dot of t plus sine x of t equals u of t, then we can say that we have, and I'll say that's our time varying differential equation, now we have a nonlinear differential equation. We can now go back a step and say, well, you know what? This example of our time invariant differential equation was actually a linear time invariant differential equation. And this was a linear time varying differential equation. And this one, of course, is our nonlinear example. Notice I really didn't have to say much about the input in terms of uh, classifying these differential equations. I just focused on the left-hand side for these examples. Okay, so now let's go on to linearizing nonlinear differential equations. And at its heart, it's a matter of taking in a differential equation like this, focusing on the nonlinear terms and linearize them about some operating point. So the steps involved are to find an operating point or equilibrium point that we want to linearize about. And then we just want we just need to linearize the nonlinear terms. There's lots of ways to do that. Um, 
I'm going to use a particular method which is a little bit cumbersome, but hopefully it will highlight exactly what we're doing in terms of trying to generate a system of linear differential equations that just capture small motions about some operating point. Well, let's go ahead and do this by example. So again, I'm going to start skipping the explicit dependence of time of everything. So here's one differential equation, and it's coupled up with another differential equation that looks like this. So we have two coupled uh, second-order differential equations, and we want to linearize those. Well, first let's find an operating point to linearize them about. I'm going to use y equal pi over 2, and x equals 1 third. So if I use y equal, uh, and I should call this y0 and x0, if I specify that y0 is pi over 2, and I look at the equilibrium configuration of this equation, what I mean by that is I take the all the terms that have uh, a derivative with respect to time in them, and I set those equal to 0. And so I get these two equations. And I should designate all these with a subscript 0 to indicate that they are some sort of um, static condition. So if I pick y0 equal pi over 2, this term is 0. I'm sorry, that term is 1. And x0 is equal to 1 third. So this equation balances. And if I plug x0 and y0 into this equation, I get for u0 square root of pi over 6. So now I have this equilibrium point that I'm going to linearize about. Okay, so now let's go forth with the linearization. So I'll draw a little line like so. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to explicitly replace the x's with this representation of x. It's our equilibrium point plus some small deviation from it, delta x. We'll do the same with y, and do the same with our input. Now we didn't have to do it this way, but there's a couple nice features. First off, it really hits home the notion that we are generating differential equations in terms of delta x and delta y and delta u, deviations from x0, y0, and u0. Also, during the linearization process, we can then just linearize about the, the quantity delta x equals delta y equals delta u equals 0. Okay, so let's take these expressions and substitute them directly into here. x double dot just becomes delta x double dot plus 3 x0 plus delta x minus sine y0 plus delta y equals 0. And for the second differential equation, delta y double dot plus x0 plus delta x times y0 plus delta y. And that equals u0 plus delta u. And now all I have to do is focus on my nonlinear terms. That would be this one and this one. And I just need to linearize those or create approximate representations of them that are linearized about delta x equals delta y equals 0. So let's do the sine y0 plus delta y first. And I'll do that out in a little bit of detail and then um, 
use a different different approach for the square root nonlinearity. So if I use my Taylor series on that about delta x or delta y equals zero, I get sine y zero. Right, I'm just evaluating this expression at delta y equals zero plus the partial of sine y zero uh, plus delta y with respect to delta y. Then I evaluate that at delta y equals zero and then multiply it by delta y. And then I don't bother with the higher order terms. Now if I carry out those operations, I just get sine y zero plus cosine y zero times delta y. And I can substitute that directly into here. And my first equation is just about cooked. So let me go down just a little bit, get some fresh space, and make that substitution and point out one interesting little thing that happens. So delta x double dot, plus I'm going to multiply this out, 3x zero plus 3 delta x minus sine y zero minus cosine y zero times delta y, and that's equal to zero. Okay, here's the interesting thing that happens. If I look at this, I can see that I have a differential equation in terms of delta, 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 but I have, and this is just a coefficient by the way, in front of this delta y, but I have some pesky terms here that don't seem to be multiplied by any of the dependent variables, the delta x's or delta y's. Well, they actually come from the work we did up here. Notice that 3x0 minus sine y0 is equal to 0 based on our equilibrium configuration. If I go down to this equation, I can see that I have 3x0 minus sine y0. So this combined quantity is actually 0 and goes away. That gives you a bit of a sanity check in terms of determining if your algebra was done correctly. If I also go one more step and plug in the equilibrium configuration, I get another interesting thing happening. The equilibrium point that we picked was y0 equals pi over 2. When I put that into here, that coefficient is actually 0. So my linearized version of that first equation is just that. It's rather crazy. It's now completely decoupled from the second equation. And it has no forcing function. So it will only respond to some sort of initial condition in delta x. OK, so let's move on to the second equation. In the second equation, we have to focus on this term and linearize it. So let me scoot down just a wee bit. And to do that, what I'm going to do is multiply that whole thing out. So I have x0, y0 plus x0 delta y plus y0 delta x plus delta x delta y. Now whenever you see terms that look like order 2 or higher in the deltas, you should be highly suspicious of them. And actually, you should be a little bit thankful because those terms can just be thrown out immediately. I'll keep this one around just for a little bit longer, um, just so you can see that it matches up with the expression above, and we'll get rid of it at the end. What I'm going to do with this is um, use the binomial expansion on it. Because again, I'm expanding about delta x and delta y equals 0, and so that's a uh, convenient thing to use. And so what I need to do is factor out this term, the x0, y0. So uh, let's see if I can squeeze it in right here. x0, y0. So I factor that out, and then what I get here is 1 plus this whole big expression, x0 delta y 
plus y0 delta x plus delta x delta y all over x0, y0, and this big expression is to the one-half. And now I can use my binomial expansion on this and get x0, y0, this coefficient, or this term out in front, is equal to 1 plus one-half this expression. Now I'm going to throw out my, my delta x, delta y, because I'm done with the linearization and any terms that are of order 2 or greater in the delta uh, dependent variables I can lop off. So I get 1 half x0 delta y plus y0 delta x divided by x0, y0. And let's see, I'll put that there, and that there. And now I can substitute that back up into here. So let me scooch down a little bit more and do that. Okay, so we'll have delta y double dot plus square root of x0, y0 times this whole thing. divided by x0, y0. And that's equal to u0 plus delta u. Okay, so here's our second differential equation. And again, if you take this and multiply it through into here, you'll see that you end up with a, con a couple constants floating around. There's this term, square root of x0, y0. And over on the right-hand side, there's this term. I, but those are also related to the work we did up here. Well, not quite there, but right here, where we did this for our equilibrium configuration. The square root of x0, y0 is equal to u0. So, when we come down here, we can actually cancel that out with this. Um, I could do a little bit of rearranging of this thing. Um, delta y double dot plus x0 square root of x0 y0 over x0 y0 and a 2 times delta y plus y0 square root of x0 y0 over 2 x0, y0, delta x equals delta u. And I could put a box around that. And we could certainly substitute into this equation our values of y0 equal pi over 2, and x0 equals 1 third. And I would get a constant coefficient, a linear time invariant differential equation in the delta y double dots. It has a delta x, so it does couple up with this one. Um, and that's about it. So just to summarize, uh, I went through the differences between linear and nonlinear differential equations, and hopefully you can recognize the difference if you're handed or if you're faced with a uh, differential equation that might be nonlinear. And then just went through an example where we first went after the equilibrium configuration of the nonlinear differential equation, and then just linearized the two nonlinear terms that we had. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.